Welcome back! My name is Baller Scuba. This is Video Games Over Time! We are still in 1981, and we are still in Ultima. And today I do plan on finishing Ultima. Uh, we do have a couple things to go over before we get started. Uh, the first is that I was able to get everything maxed out pretty much. I even maxed out my food, uh, although I have been walking around a little bit so it doesn't uh, show as maxed out anymore. I do have all four gems now because I went through and took care of all of the monsters and got all the four gems from those quests. Uh, I was able to get my intelligence back up uh, just went back to the same signpost and uh, used that a few times to get my intelligence back up. Not that it matters all that much. Uh, I did want to point out that there are actually two enemies that I have m noticed that I missed. The first one was actually on the bottom floors of the dungeons. And his name is the Demon. I'll show you a picture of him here. Uh, the Demon. Let's read about him. Fierce, bat-winged horrors armed with cruel talons and barbed tridents. Demons were unknown in Sosaria hitherto the advent of mundane. Drinkers of human souls, demons are said to relish the screams of tortured humans above all else. Uh, the other one that I missed is the one that uh, we talked about a little bit previously. Uh, I can't find one. But uh, I'll see if I can find a picture of them. They're actually a little bit harder to find pictures of. Uh, they're out in the world. They're actually in the forest and they are hidden among the trees. So they're very difficult to spot. Uh, they are Trents. And hopefully I can find a picture and show you here of, of a Trent. Trent, native to the woodlands of Sosaria, the evil Trent seems like an ordinary oak tree until one approaches near enough to be ensnared in the grasp of its plaint branches. Once it hath crushed the life from the victim, the Trent then devours it, leaving no trace of its prey to warn other travelers. So that is uh, the rest of the bestiary, so to speak. Uh, we are done there. Uh, there's still more to talk about in the uh, manual, believe it or not. Uh, we'll get to that pretty soon. Uh, let's head into the city here. I've, I've just been hanging out near Lord British's place. I don't know if I'm going to do everything here, but it would make sense for me to do it at Lord British's place. After all, that is uh, Richard Garriott's alter ego. Uh, back here in the city of Britain, we need to purchase something. We need to purchase the last thing that I have been putting off for a long time. We're going to purchase the shuttle. All right, we got it. All right, yeah, I can easily afford it. You will need uh, some money to spare as well. Uh, probably at least 2,000 coins. That's probably what we're talking about if you want to make it through this particular section of the game. And this is going to be something completely different because this is a space shuttle. This is going to take us to space. So before we actually head to space, let's read the section of the manual on space. This is called Star Walking. Before the Archmage Mondain can be defeated, one's metal will first have to be tested in the farthest reaches of the heavens. Tis said that the Evil One has formed alliances with star-walking monsters of unparalleled savagery. These malicious creatures stand poised to swoop down upon our people and devastate them. The need to slay the vile wizard is redoubled in the face of this threat. Should a champion emerge from the mists of legend, the means by which to combat this menace from the skies will appear, so say the prophets. The legends which foretell of this hero include a number of writings and several ballads sung by the bards of our realm. Among the more recent discoveries pertaining to the coming of the Star Walkers is an arcane manuscript found on the foothills of Mount Drash. Since it appears to hold instructions for the use of some form of transport, it has been broadcast throughout the land in hopes that it might prove useful to one engaged in the quest to rid Sosaria of Mondain. The substance of the document is as follows. In the heavens, each vehicle has the means to control rotation, as well as thrust and retro, reverse thrust. In the front view, one can turn left, right climb, and dive. The starways are divided into 49 sectors on a 7x7 grid. In the top view mode, 
one can see all within the current sector. A long-range scan may be obtained by use of the INFORM control. Consult a pilot's reference manual for the symbols needed to interpret a scan. One can jump to the next sector in the direction of current travel by using the hyperjump capability of the vehicle. Docking with starbases can be obtained at any of the unused docking ports and should be made only at slow speeds while headed directly into the port opening. A docking fee is required. Upon docking, a base command query will be issued and the pilot is expected to indicate the direction toward the next vehicle that will be used. Re-entry takes place when your ship passes over the lands of Sosaria. Note, only the shuttlecraft has heated shields. Any vehicle will incinerate if it collides with a star. These are important things. One may encounter and engage in combat with hostile beings in the heavens. Once combat has begun, the pilot cannot return to the top view mode until all enemy craft have been driven from the current sector, or the pilot has chosen to hyperjump to the next sector. Important! Changing from front view mode to top view mode at high speeds will surely result in a fatal collision. Be wary of fuel levels and shield condition. A ship without fuel drifts forever, and a depleted shield spells certain death. Our most learned scholars have translated the document into the common tongue of the realm, but certain terms and phrases have no meaning even to the most erudite sage. Nonetheless, such is our desire to be rid of the scourge of mundane that we make this information available to all. So yeah, we're going to go to space and we're going to play Star Raiders, basically. Uh, let's exit our vehicle. Let's board the shuttle. Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four. Three, two, one. Thou hast lifted off. All right, now we've made it to space. Did you enjoy our journey? Uh, we need to dock here at the starport, um, that, at the base. That's the first thing we need to do. All right, so let's go here and stop. Uh, yeah, basically we have thrust and retro thrust. Uh, that's what we need to use in order to make sure that everything lines up. And yeah, I, I go super slow when I'm trying to dock here. Because I don't want to screw this up. I believe that is lined up. It is. Okay, now we have the option to choose our ship. Uh, let me get uh, the notes in front of me about these ones. I know I want the bottom one, uh, but I don't remember all the numbers uh, to explain why. Okay, so the one uh, on the right is our shuttle. It has a thousand shields and a thousand fuel. Uh, the one on the left is the Phantom. That require that has a hundred shields, which is not much, and five thousand fuel, which is a lot. The bottom ship is the Star Cruiser. Uh, this one has five thousand shields and one thousand fuel. This is gonna be the one that I want. So I'm gonna hit down to select. Thou art in the bottom sh uh, ship, and you can see that uh, my numbers are outdated, to be honest. But it's five thousand shields, and um. 2500 fuel but this is the one that i want no matter what so probably the other one has more shields than i think it does uh it, it changes based on your version so uh the numbers that i have might be a little outdated either way this is the ship that you're going to want the star cruiser okay so we backed out of the ship let's hit i for inform and search and here we can see the sector scan if you have seen uh, me play star raiders this might be very familiar to you uh, but basically here, the plus sign means that there is a base here. Uh, we don't have to actually defend the bases like we did in Star Raiders, uh, but if we want to refuel and all that kind of stuff, uh, we will have to spend our money at the bases anytime we want to do that, and we're going to want to do that. Uh, the kind of diamond-looking ones, uh, those are um, sectors with a star in them. The H is where the enemies are. That's going to be important. And then the ones that uh, just kind of look like stars, we'll, we'll say that, it, it's multicolored, uh, there's nothing there. So what we're going to want to do is we're going to want to clear ourselves a little bit of room here. All right, that, that's good. When, when I'm doing this, I go super slow. All right, so we're going to thrust a little bit. We're going to change our view using V. 
Now we're in first person view, and I'm going to hit H for hyper jump. Because I'm pointing down, we're going to go into uh, the sector pointing down. Light speed. And once we are done, we will have to start fighting. And we're going to be up against um, TIE fighters, basically. These, uh, these are our enemies straight out of Star Raiders, to be honest. Uh, I'm not particularly good at firing this, uh, mostly because the cursor never stops. So I just kind of point it in a direction and press F to fire and hope for the best on this one. Um, I need to hit that middle part and yeah, sometimes they show up and there's just not much I can do about it. All right, this one I can probably hit if, no, come on. There we go, that's two. Are we good? Okay, I think we're good. So we're gonna change our view. As you can see, I'm going very slowly. Um, we're going to check the map again. All right, I wanna go down again to go to another H here. Um, so let's go ahead and change the view and go into hyper jump again. So far, so good. We have two kills and uh, all my shields still left. Uh, I don't have to be super concerned about shields because I have a ton of money, which is why I put it off till now. This is why I put it off until now. You can technically do this as soon as you can afford the shuttle. Um, there's no barrier to entry, really, other than the price of the shuttle to do this section of the game. But I wait until I have a ton of money to make sure that I don't lose. I would recommend saving before you get out here because... Um, this is the one spot of the game where if you die, there's no recovery. Uh, we haven't really talked about death too much in this game, but should you die um, normally, uh, they'll just respawn you with uh, pretty much uh, starting stats um, in terms of uh, hit points and uh, food and coin. They start you uh, back with starting stats of that randomly somewhere on the continent. Uh, that you died on. So if you're on the third continent, you'll die on, you'll respawn on the third continent. In this part of the game, though, you, you're just done. Reload. <laughs> That's it. Uh, so you definitely want to save before you head out here, which I have done. All right, come on. Uh, it's so hard to get him. All right, there's, there's one. Probably going to need to refuel. They do shoot at me, but they haven't hit me yet. It's kind of random whether they do. All right, I think that is the third one. Yes, there's no more left. So change the view. Check the map because I've already forgotten. Um, let's go ahead and uh, just go down to the base here. And we will refuel. I, I don't see a, a purpose in not playing this not cautiously. And I think I've lost track of how many we were, we've we've killed so far. Let's change the view. As you can see, we can kind of change to anything else that I want at this point. I'll back up here. I don't think that's aligned right, but let's get closer so I can get a better idea. And I'm going to take it super slow. If you hit the sides, um, you you get a lot of damage to your ship, which is entirely possible. All right, that is too low. They won't accept that. Ooh, that looks good. All right, we're good. Choose the ship. I'm going to stick with the ship on the right and get it all refueled back up. Okay. Where do I want to go? Um, I do want to go to the left here. So let's... Swing down here, turn to the left, view hyperspace here, hyper jump, I should say. Now we're going to need to kill a total of 20 enemies. Uh, we're looking for a title here. Um, hopefully I can get it. I, I have practiced this part, but yeah, if you are familiar with Star Raiders, this is basically a... Um, kind of watered-down version of Star Raiders, which is understandable after all. This is just a part of Ultima. Star Raiders by itself was an, an entire game, a very successful game, and you can tell that Richard Garriott was a fan. Um, 
Now, there was a lot more complexity going on in Star Raiders. Oh, I've gotten hit. Couldn't hit him, though. Come on. Very difficult to get them if they're not close. But I always do try. Yeah, the, if there are enemies in the sector, they will be on the screen pretty much at all times. As soon as one goes away, the other one will show up. All right. Are we good? We're apparently good. Change my view. Let's uh, stay away from that. Okay. So I already remembered that I wanted to go up and to the left here. So that is what we are going to do. Hyper jump. And it should take me in the direction that my ship is going, which is up and to the left diagonally. Uh, so I should end up in the sector with some enemies. I do. So I've already lost track. I think we're up to like seven, somewhere around there. I do need to kill 20. I'm told that there are 45 um, available. It seems to be more than that. Uh, I'm, I've never been interested in actually trying to kill all the enemies here. Once I get to 20, I move on. Um, not that this is frustrating, but I don't think I need to spend extra time in this part of the game. All right, I got one. And it looks like there was just the one. Okay, so front view. And I believe I wanted to go this way. I did. So let's... Oh, right. Change my view, then hyper jump. You can only hyper jump in first person view. I think because he only wanted to animate that particular part of it. Let's be honest, it, it's probably limitations more than anything canonically. All right. Uh, come on. There we go. Got that one. Not going to be able to get those. Yeah, the, the cursor can only go so fast. Yeah, I can't speed it up or anything. Can I get there in time? I can because you changed direction. Oh, that looked good. There we go. Got another one, changed the view. All right, nothing doing here. Where do I wanna go? I wanna go south from here. Yes. I was debating going back um, up and to the right in order to get uh, fuel, but I think I'm good just going south here. Change the view, hyper, hyper jump. I'm still like, I'm not really keeping track of how many we're killing. They'll let me know when I hit 20. They will let me know. All right, where? Where are you going? How do I hit you? Damn you, H. Die. Yeah, there's only so much to be done here. Can I get there in time? Only if you change direction, which you didn't. Not the direction I need, at least. All right, got you. And it looks like that is it. Change the view. There's, oh, there's a dock right here. Okay, that's not high enough, but we'll get closer here. And I mean, even if you hit the sides of that, they won't accept it. Yeah. Okay. You have to be very precise here. There we go. Okay, refueled. You can see I'm losing quite a bit of coin, but I'm okay with that. Okay, where do I want to go from here? Um, let's go up and to the left, and that'll take me over to the right side of the map. I think that'll be good. All right, then change the view here and hyper jump. And we should be in another sector with enemies. We are. Okay. See what I can do here. 
Uh, nope. Got away too quick. Nothing. Nothing. Not going to be able to do it. I don't think I'm going to be able to hit that one either. You want to put one in a spot where I can hit it? That would be great. Maybe I can get that one. Looks like I can. Well, I can at least attempt. There we go. One more down. And I believe that we are now halfway through. Oh, shouldn't have chased that one. All right, I can try to get this one. Oh, nicely done. That was, that was a good shot. Nothing. Probably not going to be able to get that one either. Unless you turn. Oh, it was so close, though. All right. I think that was three this sector. So how are we doing? Okay. Stop that. Stop that. We are going to go to the left. And the controls on this are a little funkier uh, than Star Raiders because he used so many of the controls for other parts of the game. Um, it, it just has a weird, weird little control scheme sometimes. Like I said, though, having this as part of the game, it, it's different. It's definitely something that you would not expect when you first start this game that you're going to be out in space fighting TIE fighters. They don't really give them names, do they? He didn't bother naming these enemies. Not in this game. They're just enemies. They resemble the Xylon fighters from Star Raiders, but at the end of the day, they're TIE fighters from Star Wars. I did get hit, finally. <laughs> Everything kind of goes a little bit more slowly in this version than in the original Star Raiders. Okay, there we go. Oh, how convenient. Is that good? Probably going to need to be a little bit higher. Ooh, I'm going to try it. Nope. <laughs> That's too high. that good okay we are good there let's back up check our map where are we going okay this is gonna take a little bit of work let's go up that way view hyperspace so that we go diagonally all right change our view stop that way and then we wanted to go north of here. Yes. View hyperspace, hyper jump. I always want to call it hyperspace. It's what I'm used to. But I think in both games that we've played now, it's hyper jump. I think even in Star Raiders, it was hyper jump. But I'm, I'm just used to saying hyperspace, and I don't know why. All right, there. Oh, come on. Got one. Don't know how close we are. Uh, to be honest, I'm probably going to get the message um, that I've done it and then clear it out really quickly because I, uh, I'll i hit a button, which happens. You know, you hit a button and the thing goes away before I get a chance to read it. So just putting a warning out there for that now. I will try to be able to read it. It's so far away. Can I get there? Possibly. All right. Oh, got that one. Like you need to get closer so I can hit you. I've never been able to hit an H, I don't think. Maybe I did earlier when I got that really good shot, but. It's so difficult with a moving cursor. That's always moving. 
Not going to get that one. Or that one. Got to put it in a spot where I can do something with it. Maybe. How did it get down there? Thought I could get there in time and it was going to be big enough. Technically I did, but couldn't land the shot. All right, thou hast achieved this, the rank of Space Ace. So I actually got to read it this time. All right, we will stop there. Where am I? Ooh, one away. All right, so we want to go this way. This the the home base is basically the center of the map. So we will go there. And that is what we need to do. We need to get Space Ace. If you're not a Space Ace, you can't win the game. Oh, whoa. A little too close there. That's why you don't get out of front person view at high speeds for that reason. Okay, there. A little bit too far that way. That looks good. There we are. We're going to choose the shuttle again. Let's back out. Um, yeah, actually. Right there. And then we will head towards the lands of Sosario, which is this way. And there we go. We have landed safely. We'll exit that, board my normal ship. And um, do I want to do this? Let's take a look. This is one of the worst setups for rescuing the princess, so I'm not going to do it. Even though it's Lord British's place and it feels right doing it there, I'm going to head up and do it here. Because this one's a lot easier. Uh, this one, I have to take on like three or four, like I think two less guards than the last one. I think I only have to take on three here. Okay, so we will kill the jester. Yeah, what we're going to do is we're going to rescue the princess. Um... Once you are level eight and have achieved Space Ace, um, rescuing the princess does something different. All right, so I have the key. As long as you're here, I can start shooting. Try to unlock this. All right, and I can cut you off. Just pass there. All right, down you go. And then I only have to take on three. The other one, I think I have to take on five at least to get out of there. So I'm not a fan of doing that. Okay, we are good to go. Let's get you out of here. And what do you have to say this time? Thou hast saved the princess Cassandra, got 500 hit points. And that's all I could read before the thing went away. I didn't hit a button or anything. But what she says this time is different. What she says is that there is now a time machine on the northwest of the continent. Once again, you have to be a space ace, you have to be level eight, and then what really if you want to use the time machine you're gonna to have to have all four gems. Those are really the only things that you need to do in this game. But we're gonna to head to the northwest part of the continent. There it is. And we can find our time machine. Let's exit this board the time machine entering the craft thou dost remark upon four holes marked red green blue and white the proper gems fit in each hole further examination leads thee to two discoveries there is a button marked launch and thou art locked in with nothing to do but press it as soon as thou hast press the large black button lights begin to dance across the control screens generators shake the very floor beneath thy feet the small craft begins to tremble and rattle as thy journey through time begins. After but a few moments, thou dost feel a strong magic pulling thee from thy craft. A moment later, thou art face to face with the evil mundane himself. Good luck. This is it. And we have made it to final boss time. A thousand years in the past before he has created the gem. You hear a strange chanting. We're going to have to stop that. The first thing that we're going to do is make it all the way here. And here at the gem, we're going to press G forget. And doing that, 
destroys the gem. As you can see, they have taken 7,499 hit points. The gem is destroyed, Mundane casts Mind Blaster, hit, stats are reduced. Not that much, but I do have less stats than I did before. Alright. We're going to start attacking him. He's casting Mind Blaster, which reduces my stats. He's also casting Magic Missile, which would do damage. Um, Alright, we have done enough damage to make him run. That is good. We'll keep hitting him. Alright, now he's turned into a bat, and we have effectively won. But, we need to keep going here. We're going to chase him, and every time he's in range, I'm going to shoot him. I don't think that's in range. I think he has to be one closer. Get over here. Attack. All right, he's still there. Yeah, he's going to keep running. No. There. Nope, I missed. No. Stay there. Stay where I can hit you. All right, we got him. Thou art victorious. We have defeated Mondane. A rain of silver lightning heralds the death of Mondane. Fleeting glimpses of fates avoided rush through thy mind. As the arcane power of the mage's dying screams echoes in thy ears. A, thousands, a thousand years pass in but a moment's time as a strange sleep overcomes thee. Upon awakening, thou dost find thyself in new surroundings. A stately youth in violet robes helps thee to thy feet, whereupon thou dost see the thousands who gaze upon thee in adoration. Thy selfless heroism hath saved our people, my worthy one. Should our gratitude alone not be enough to sustain thee, know that I, Lord British, hereby ordain that the entire realm of Sosaria be at thy service for all time henceforth. So let it be done. And we have beaten Ultima. And that's the game. Uh, that's all they're going to give us. It just shows this. This is our victory screen. We have won! So with the game now played, it's time to talk about how it holds up today. Playing the game today, I do have to say I had a lot of fun. I thoroughly enjoyed playing this game. With that said, I have to put a little asterisk on that and say that I'm already a fan of RPGs. So for me to play an RPG, I'm going to have fun playing it. If you are not necessarily a fan of RPG style games, then you probably won't have as good of an experience as I did. Um, playing the game today, it does lack a lot of things that you would expect playing an RPG. It's very basic, it's very bare bones. There's not a lot going on in this game. Uh, the game is huge. It has four continents. It's technically an open world game. You can do anything you want in any order you want. There is an uh, order two things that can be accomplished, but you don't have to do them in the, that order. You can just kind of go out and do anything you want. Uh, the battle system is basic. It is attack. You can cast spells. That is a thing you can do, uh, but ultimately you're casting one spell maybe two spells to do the brunt of your damage and going through the game with a mage is a slightly different experience but not that different it would still just be attack okay attack and i win hooray um that's that's basically how the game functions most of the game is empty if we're talking about the world um there's not a lot going on there. There's a lot of towns and castles, but for the most part, the castles are designed the same, and the entire purpose is to talk to the king, and he will give you a quest, and it's basically one of two quests. Either go somewhere or kill a monster. Um, the towns are only there to give you supplies, and possibly a hint. 
and the hints are kind of not necessarily vague, but they're hard to get. And when you do get them, chances are you're already kind of figuring out what you need to do. Um, the dungeons are not important to this game. Uh, you just need to go through them to kill the monsters. And if you just wanted to go into the one dungeon and that was it, you could do that, right? There's nothing stopping you from delving into the same dungeon because they're all random and they all have the same enemies in them. So it's kind of strangely designed from a modern standpoint, this game. The structure of the game is weird because of what we're used to. Uh, the hit point system is also strange. To go into a dungeon, kill things, and then climb out, and that's how you get hit points, is a strange way uh, to get hit points from a modern perspective. Uh, it was also strange um, for the time, if we're being honest. it That's not how Dungeons & Dragons work, so why would it work here? You know, there's no resting and recovering HP. Um, I, I'm sure that had a lot to do with the programming limitations of the time, but I feel that it was an odd choice. Um, there are a lot of things that are just kind of odd about this game. Uh, the fact that you can purchase things so early in the game that make things easy. Uh, the fact that you can get the blaster and the phaser, um, not necessarily purchase those, but you can get them very early on and then never upgrade them again. If you get lucky enough, you can get the best weapon in the game for, I think, 10 pence or 100 pence, just gambling, and hey, look, the best weapon in the game. And then you're set for the rest of the game. Uh, the reflex suits being as cheap as they are and as available as they are, as early as they are, is also kind of a weird choice. Um, then we have the star walking, uh, that whole segment, the whole space segment is just a sidebar. There's no plot purpose to that part of the game. Uh, you just need to go out there, kill a certain number of enemies, come back, and then the princess likes you enough to tell you about the time machine. She's got a thing for space aces, apparently. Um, there's a lot that is weird about this game. And from a modern perspective, it could be a turnoff to a lot of people. That's kind of the point of what I'm talking about here. Um, in terms of the graphics, the graphics are very basic, but for a game of this size, I'm willing to overlook that. Because the game is so big, there are going to be a lot of limitations to what can be shown on the screen. So when I'm looking at, I don't know, the spider that looks like a crab or... Um, the gremlin and it's just the head uh, that I'm willing to overlook because the game is so big and so vast that the graphics are probably going to have to suffer a bit so I'm willing to overlook that but there's going to be a lot of people that aren't uh, in terms of sound we are talking about beeps and boops there's not much else going on it's computer beeps that is all that I am hearing um, I I'm not a fan of that, to be honest, but I at least understand why it had to happen that way. And for there to be sound at all is definitely a benefit to this game at the time for a computer game, especially of this size, to have any sort of sound is definitely a plus. But the sound is not great. It is just beeps. That's all you get. Um, so in terms of moving on to repl replayability, I would say that the game's replayability is low. I don't really have any interest in seeing how a thief would play or a mage would play. Um, I didn't really even talk about those all that much because at the, at the end of the day, all we're really talking about is stats and access to a few spells that you're probably not going to use anyway. Um, Playing as a fighter is about 95% the same as playing a wizard. It's not going to be that different for you. Uh, so I would say the replayability is low. Uh, most of what you're going to be doing involves going back and forth between signposts that increase your stats, which is also a weird thing that I did not talk about all that much. But 
going back and forth between the signpost in order to increase your stats is a weird way to get those stats um, from a modern perspective. Even by the even by the standards of the time, that's not how Dungeons and Dragons work, and that's what the game is directly based off of. So it is a deviation to try to make it work for computers and that does pose some issues and this is how those were resolved I guess is the way that I would phrase it and I don't necessarily hold it against the game but it's weird to play it from a modern perspective uh finally we'll talk about my favorite part of any um RPG is the story the story is very basic it it's weird that you do rescue the princess and that's not your ultimate goal. Uh, there is a big bad in the game. There is the big enemy that you have to take on in Mondain and his presence is unheard of until you go back in time, which is a weird choice once again, but that has a lot to do with the design of the game. They couldn't put Mondain into the world that you're exploring uh, because you can go and explore it at any time. So you don't want to encounter the final enemy of the game randomly while you're, you know, walking around or riding around in your ship or anything like that. So I understand why it had to happen this way, but it is weird that, once again, the villain is not present, even though he's supposed to have you know, wrecked havoc on the world that you're currently in. For him not to be there is strange. But the the plot, other than Kill Mondane, was a little bit more detailed, but not much. Um, we we knew who the villain was going to be from the, from the very beginning. Uh, we knew basically what the quest was from the beginning by reading the manual and getting the rumors in the inn. And the kings and all of that were not all that important to the story other than to give us a gem. Um, they really didn't serve all that much of a purpose. So the story, although present, and I would say this is the fully, the first fully fleshed out story that we have played through. I would argue at, at least for a, an RPG, um, I'm still debating on whether Zork has a fully fleshed out story. Uh, but for an RPG, this is the first time that we had a full story. It is quite basic. So there's not a lot going on in this game. Um, but it is definitely a step in the right direction over the RPGs that we have not played. But we have mentioned like a Calabeth or Temple of Apshai. Uh, this is a step in the direction of... Um, the truly epic games that we are going to see in the future. Uh, so that's kind of my modern take on the game. If you enjoy old school RPGs, this is worth a shot. Absolutely. Um, don't let the graphics and sound limitations kind of take you back. Um, it's worth playing. I'm not sure how much it's worth going back and playing over and over, but I thoroughly enjoyed my time playing it, but I am a fan of RPGs. And that's my modern take on the game. When the game was released, the game was received well. Despite the expensive price of $39.95, over $114 in 2021, the critics felt that the game was well worth it. Ultima was seen as the best computer fantasy role-playing game at the time. In particular, the game was applauded for its scope, although the combat system was seen as a bit of a drawback. By June 1982, Ultima sold 20,000 copies. In total, the original release would sell 50,000 copies. As we discussed in our playthrough of the game, the game would go on to spawn remakes and sequels. Looking ahead, although the game would be successful and make money for California Pacific Computer Company, we will not be hearing from California Pacific Computer Company again. Although they would publish a couple more games over the next couple years, none would reach nearly the same importance as Ultima. As for Ken Arnold, he would continue to work in the video game industry, and we will hear from him again. 
As for Richard Garriott, this success would further fuel his desire to pursue video game creation as a career. We will follow that career closely as we continue. And that will do it for the story of Ultima for now. My name is Baller Scuba. This has been Video Games Over Time. Thank you so much for watching, and I hope to see you in our next video where we'll go back to a console game.